I've spent 200 days working on my indie RPG, Project Seaborn, and in this video, I'm going to cover the entire development up to this point. Project Seaborn has a unique battle system, where you fight enemies in bullet hell action, and then, using mana generated in the action state, you can strategize with skills in the plan state to give yourself an advantage. I already made a video covering the first 100 days of development, but if you haven't seen that one, or it's just been a while, I'm going to quickly recap those first 100 days here. If you want to see them covered in more detail, then you can check out that video on my channel. Over the first 100 days, I basically just put together the fundamentals of the battle system. I started by making an initial prototype, and then started on making the final version of the foundation. In this, I built out movement, attacking, and made it so you can switch between the three party members, who are Liam, the melee guy, Yuri, the ranged guy, and Ava, the mage. Then I made enemies for you to battle, and while I was at it, I also made it possible for those enemies to be on your team. And to make this less confusing, I just called the enemies fighters, which can be on your team or the enemies team. Then I made the base for the plan state, where you can use axe on party members and on enemies. I also made a lot of scriptable objects, which are basically the data containers that Unity uses to uh, store data. I made objects for the weapons that the party members use, actions that you can take in the plan state, and also made them for the bullet patterns the enemies use. And after this, I began to refine these systems and added some subsystems to make them more dynamic to use. First off, I added buffs and debuffs that you can apply through weapons or through the axe system. And I also added a bunch of polish and effects like hit flash, screen shake, sound effects, and particle effects. I also made a little bit of content for the game as well, including the first two enemies, the dapper snapper and the slow roller. And I spent a ton of time on art for the game, making eight directional animations for Liam, environmental art, and lots of animations for the enemies. And I also experimented with a few interesting systems. The main one was weapon techniques that were basically super attacks so you can use to change up how you play the game for a little while while dealing tons of damage. The first one I made was for the katana, and for it you dash through a bunch of enemies and then deal damage based on how many enemies that you dash through. With this system, I also tried making hand-drawn digital art for the UI and I kinda like how it looks. In the end, I decided to scrap the weapon technique system, but it gave me some ideas for the future. And the last big thing that I made for the game for the 100th day was adding combat skills to each job. Before this, the only way to attack was just holding the left mouse button. But with this addition, I figured that I can make combat more interesting and also add a bit more uniqueness to each job. I made combat skills for Liam's first job, the ninja, which were a ricocheting shuriken and a decoy, but I still need to make the skills for the other party members. And I finished off the first 100 days by building a small map of a bunch of battle rooms, and I made a system for spawning waves of enemies as well. I also tried out having big rooms of a bunch of neutral enemies in them, which you can choose to either ignore or fight. And yeah, we're all caught up. I've been making games for a while, and so I've been looking for a good way to put together a portfolio. And I was recently reached out to by this video sponsor, Domains, who provided me with a domain for me to make a website. So I put together butwhy11.fun. This is my first time making any sort of website, so it was a learning process, but I was able to build a website that is a hub for my YouTube channel, all my game projects, and my other social medias. Fun Domains provided me with a unique domain that helps my website to stand out and be instantly appealing. And with this new website, I also have a portfolio that I can easily share and update as I continue to make new game and video projects. You can use the code BOTY11 to get 90% off a .fun domain for one year at www.get.fun. Thank you to .fun domains for sponsoring this video, and also be sure to check out my website BOTY11.fun, linked in this video's description. On day 101 and 102, I started on a new enemy, the Surfing Contradiction. The Surfing Contradiction is a pretty simple enemy. It's a fish on a surfboard who has an attack where they charge towards the player. It can also shoot out a bunch of short-range bullets to stay there for a while, so it is basically designed to control a bunch of grind in the battle room. While I did get the basics done for the enemy, I actually never got around to finishing it. On day 103, I started making the combat skills for Yuri and Ava who don't have them yet. I planned them out in a program I used called Millinote. For Yuri, I feared it would be interesting to make a utility skill that is very powerful but has a long cooldown that can be reduced by skillful use of the secondary skill. So I made a secondary skill that is a charge up attack that pierces enemies and for each enemy that it finishes off, it reduces the utility skill's cooldown by a few seconds. The utility skill for Yuri is an arrow dip that applies a status effect to the next 10 attacks. Finally, I think it would be cool if that status effect can be changed to different ones during the plan state via skills. For Ava, I fear that a pretty simple kit with a small spell that affects a large group of enemies or friendlies would be interesting if you 
you could change out the effect in the plant states. Using this, the skill could be used for healing a bunch of friendlies or dealing damage and inflicting a status effect to a bunch of enemies. As for actual work, I made the basics for Yuri's charge up attack. It works, but it's not currently very polished or satisfying to use. On the next day, I made some UI for displaying what status effects you have and how many stacks of them that you have. It uses object pulling and a horizontal layout group, so it should be very good performance wise. And on day 105 and 106, I figured that I would just make status effects less dumb. Right now, instead of decreasing stack by stack, status effects just disappear all at once. So I changed it so that they decrease stack by stack. And after that, I started on making a status effect for the player that makes Yuri's bow attack spread a poison status effect. So I had to make unique behavior for the arrow dip status effect. So I programmed that in, and then made the combat skill give you 10 stacks of poison dip. And on day 107, I focused on polishing up these new combat skills as well as Liam's already made ones. So I added lots of screen shake, animations, and particle effects. And now the charge attack feels much better. On the next day, I decided that I would try out a new tool that I got from making pixel art particles. It's called Pixel FX Designer, and using it, I made the particles for Ava's Plasma Ball Utility Skill, which I think looks pretty cool. And for the next two days, I just made Ava's Combat Skills. First off, the Small Spell, which just spawns an object that affects all the instances in a radius around it with an attack or healing effect. These instances also include the player, so you could hurt yourself with a fire attack. I could remove this, but I kind of like the extra risk that it adds. And I also set up the basics for shooting the Plasma Ball with the skill. After that, I set up all the stuff for changing the skills to the plan state. This was pretty simple, and I made sure to make it so I didn't have to individually program it. And now using the same system, you can both switch arrow dip types of Yuri and small spell types of Aba. For day 111, I added the ability for bullets to bounce off walls. And that was for the plasma ball. So now it bounces off walls, but I wanted to give it a BFG style effect, where it damages enemies in a radius around it with lightning lines. So I made a script for dealing tick damage in a radius around the ball, which I can easily reuse for similar things in the future. And I also set up a simple line renderer, which comes out of the ball and connects to enemies hurt by it. The line doesn't look great yet. I need to eventually make a shader or something for it to make it look more like lightning. But on day 112, I made a destruction particle effect for the plasma ball whenever it disappears. Then I fixed a bunch of bugs with a wave system and some other things that I've been meaning to get to. And on day 113, I graduated from high school. But more importantly, I started planning a new system for charging focus, which is the mana in the game. This charging system passively generates focus over time, but you can increase the amount charged by killing enemies in rapid succession. And I got that system up and running, but it still got some bugs. So on day 114, I started fixing these bugs and set up some basic UI for it. And the UI is ugly. I need to redo UI at some point, but I also decided to remove neutral zones from the game for now. I don't know if I'll bring them back, they don't really fit the bullet hell part of the game, and they definitely don't fit the plan state well. So I think they'll stick to handmade combat rooms for now. And on day 115, I set up a new way for entering the plan state. Instead of being booted into it every few seconds, you instead have to stand still and concentrate, similar to how healing works in Hollow Knight, in order to enter the plan state. This was an interesting change, but it would not be the last time that I reworked how you enter the plan state. I'm going to be putting this battle system to the test, and creating the very first full boss fight in the game. The boss will have a lot of attacks, stages, and even a brand new system that I'm going to make, but I've got a lot of work to do before then, so let's get started. So this day, I made the framework for job attributes, which are unique passive abilities that each job has. The job attribute for the ninja is that if you dodge bullets for long enough, then you enter a state of camo, where all of your attacks are criticals. But on the next day, I started on the next big system that I want to implement this month, damage types. This is a sort of elemental strength and weakness system. Right now there are physical and elemental attacks, but I want to take it a step further and have sharp and blunt physical damage and fire, water, ice, energy, and poison elemental damage. Different enemies will be weak and resistant to different elements, which should add more strategy to combat and also allow me more space to make unique jobs and weapons. So I built out a pretty inspector duel for elemental damage multipliers. Integrating damage types into all of the projectile, attack performing, and taking damage functions took quite a while, but I was able to get the system fully up and running in one day. So now different attacks have different damage types. And I decided to work on screen shake the next day. Game juice is important, and right now the way I handle screen shake means that all the shakes have the same length and it's annoying to add new shakes. So I made a new class which I can use to easily add screen shakes. And you can control the amplitude, intensity, and duration of each screen shake. And also on day 118, I did more back-end work with the job traits. The next day, I decided that I would tackle sound effects. The game is definitely quiet right now, so I thought that I would liven it up a bit. And I used a similar method to the screen shake from earlier, with a class that makes it easier to add sound effects 
effects anywhere in the code. I also wanted to make sound effects of a slightly randomized pitch whenever you play them to add more variety, but I realized that if you change the pitch for an audio source, then it'll switch the pitches for all of its currently playing sounds, not just one, which sounds bad. So after looking around online, I created a workaround. Instead of using the function audio source play one shot, I have created a big array of audio sources, and whenever you play a sound effect from the sound effect manager, you automatically select the first empty audio source and play the sound there with the pitch shifting. And this works great and doesn't interfere with already playing sounds. I just had to have lots of audio sources in the array, but after implementing this in the code, I got to making some sound effects. I made them for the player's weapons, killing enemies, winning combat, dashing, hurting enemies, and more. And the sound effects aren't all great, but just having them in the game makes it a lot more satisfying to play. And I got this all done fairly quickly, so I had time to also upgrade my dialogue system. Right now it's just basic text, so I decided to upgrade it using Text Animator for Unity, which is a pretty neat asset I recently picked up. So I sat down to implement it in the dialogue system and it took about 5 minutes done. Now dialogue looks like this, and I can easily add effects to the text and stuff. I'm not sponsored, but this tool is really cool and I can't recommend it enough. On day 120, I replaced the old camo ability for the ninja with a new decoy skill. Whenever you place down this decoy, all enemies switch their targets to it and you can escape, helping you get out of a sticky situation and also charge up your camo and also group enemies together, which helps with the ninja's shuriken attack. Admittedly, the skill is still a little bit bland and unfun to use, so I'm thinking of making it so you can blow up the decoy after you place it. But also on this day, I expanded the map a bit. I'm still using the same art and I need to make a lot of new art and scenery for the game in the future, but I'll be getting to that next month, so for now it's just basic sand and walls. I added even more sound effects and then I also fixed some bugs with the different abilities for the characters. And now it's time to finally start making the boss fights. I'll be making a base for bosses in the game first, and then I'll build the first proper boss after that. A boss is basically just a souped up enemy, so I'm inheriting from the enemy control script for the boss control script. And the main thing that sets a boss apart from different enemies are its multiple health stages, custom behavior, and a health bar, plus a start animation and a defeat animation. So I set up the start animation and health bar, and it basically just zooms in, says some stuff about the boss, and then zooms out and the fight starts. This placeholder guy is the boss for now. And now that I have a boss fight base in place, I decided to completely pivot for a bit and work on an inventory and item system. There are five types of items. Weapons, armors, equipments, consumables, and key items. And I set up a bunch of backend things for making these assets, storing item data, and stacking items. And on the next day, I pivoted again. I guess I just wasn't too keen on focusing on anything for more than a day at a time. But I polished up Liam, who is the mainly character with a ninja job. And I made a proper sprite and animation for the decoy, added some particles to some of his other skills, and also fixed his stupid bug where collision damage sometimes instantly kills enemies. And I finished up by making an explosion particle effect that I then, uh, never used in the game. Yeah, this was a weird day. On day 125, I made some UI for the consumable item menu that you use in the plan state, and continuing into the next day, I worked on setting up consumable item effects and making it so that you can use them in battle. Also, I added the basis for money into the game. In the future, I'll have shops and stuff, but for now, enemies can just drop a random range of money whenever they die. And on days 127 and 128, I expanded the consumable item inventory into a full inventory, with tabs, objects pulling, and stacking items. This inventory stuff is kind of boring, but it will be necessary for making rewards for fights, progression, and managing equipment, which are all things I want to do soon, so I figured I would build a base right now. But it's time to get back to boss fights. I started planning out the boss fight on paper now. I went through a few concepts, starting with a fighter plane that has a shark for a head. But while that's a decent design for a boss, and I might come back to it later, I thought it might be kind of weird to have a plane floating around there for you to fight. So I instead decided to make a big crab. Specifically, a big crab with some ancient runes on its back. And with this new crab enemy, that means that 50% of the enemies in the game are crabs. I guess I just really hate crabs or something. But there are two states for the crab enemy. In the first one, runes shoot energy blast while the crab can't move. And then in a second state, the crab burrows underground and pops its claw up to shoot at you. And if you deal enough damage to the claw, then the crab re-emerges stunned and you deal extra damage to it. So I started on the first mode for the boss, where the crab has the runes on its back. So I made a beautiful placeholder sprite by just doubling the size of the dapper snapper and adding an ugly rock thing to it. And then I made the first few attacks. One fires a few seeking bullets from the ends of the ruins. One shoots a big wave of bullets from the middle of the boss, and another shoots a shotgun blast of bullets from either claw. But the state was feeling kind of stale this time. So the next day I made the boss boom towards the player slowly, which made it feel much better and more interesting. I also made objects pulling for bullets and the little particles that they spawn whenever hitting walls. And this should improve performance a bit, especially for attacks like the bullet wave that create tons of bullets. So I added the ability for bosses that have multiple modes as well as health stages now. You can randomly switch between modes, and will go through health stages whenever their health drops below a threshold. 
and so I started on the custom behavior for the second mode of the crab. To start this mode, the crab becomes invincible, and then it stops moving and attacking. It also creates a claw object which will be doing the attacking for the stage, and also spawns two dapper snapper enemies that have less HP than the usual dapper snapper. And I started day 131 by making a short animation for killing a boss. It's kinda glitchy with, with the camera zooming in and out a bunch, but I'll fix it later. Then I made the behavior for the crab claw. It's basically just its own enemy separate from the boss that performs a few basic attacks, like a burst, shotgun blast, and a seeking shot. It also teleports around the arena. Day 132, I made the boss no longer be invincible whenever you destroy the claw, and I also lowered its defense. I had to fix some weird bugs here, where it would take one hit of damage out of the claw was destroyed and then just stop taking damage until going back to the ruin state, but I fixed it. It's hard to tell if I have the animations in game yet, but it's working. Day 133, I just managed so the player can no longer concentrate to enter the plant state during boss fights. So instead, there is this bar that decreases, and whenever it empties, the boss switches states and the plane state starts. I think this is an interesting change of pace from the normal game, with a boss controlling the flow of combat instead of you. Plus, it incentivizes you to switch party members to adapt to the stages of the boss fight. And this boss in particular, long range characters like Yuri the Archer work better during the first stage, while Liam and Ava work better on the second stage since they can take out lots of enemies faster. I also tried out adding the ability for enemies to lead shots based on the velocity of the player whenever they shoot. It was actually a pretty simple system to implement, but I ultimately disabled it for now is it's pretty inaccurate, and honestly it doesn't really fit the boss fight. And to finish off the day, I started making some final art for the boss, texturing the runes and giving him a bunch of eyes. I set up a brand new system for the boss fight, but I think it's a system I'm going to add to all enemies in the future because it's pretty cool. Whenever you enter the plant state right now, the player is the only one that gets to do anything, but this seems a bit unfair, so I made it so that the enemies also have plant state moves that work similarly to the players. I think that this will help incentivize using the plant state in battle, as enemies will be buffing themselves, debuffing you, and doing other things to gain an advantage, so you should use some moves to counter theirs and then use more to get an advantage. But for now, the only move is used by the boss, and it just slightly raises his physical defense. The 135 was spent getting the plan state system to actually function some of the time, although it's still buggy. But I also made the final sprite for the boss fights. There aren't any animations yet, but he's got big legs now. In day 136, I fixed up a few of the remaining bugs of the enemy plan state and did a bunch of polishing for the boss fights. It's not done yet, obviously, as there are no animations, but I added part particle effects to some attacks as well as some crystals on top of the ruins, which release seeking bullets. And that's just about where I'm at now with the boss fight. It's not complete yet, but the gameplay is nearing its final iteration. And I think that I've already succeeded with my goal of making use of the battle system with this boss fight, as there's some basic strategy with using the plan state moves and picking which character to use of each state. Plus I think the plan state actions for enemies are an interesting system which I'll expand on in the future. I just did a bunch of animations and pixel art. The boss fight is functional at this point, but it lacks any animation and also has a lot of bugs. So I pixeled out some attack and movement animations. In the next day, I decided to listen to some criticism. A lot of people have been complaining about my decisions to make the weapons fly. So I decided to take that into consideration, and I made them more floaty. Now the weapons lag a bit behind you whenever you move, which makes them feel a little bit more independent from you. I'll probably add a few more small effects to really sell the look of flying swords in the future, like particles and a little bit of animation. And while I was working on making these weapons look better, I also added this trail to Seeking Bullets, which I think looks cool. But on day 139, it was time to finish up the boss fight animations, so I made some more animations and then implemented them in-game. I also added status effect icons to the enemies and the boss, basically just reuse the system for the player's little status effect thing that I made earlier. And I also took the player's fireball weapon and added the new trails, which look pretty nice. And the next day, I added a small tweak to bullet trails. Now they aren't disabled whenever the bullets are disabled, which lets them fade out more organically. And the rest of the day was spent fixing some bugs, although I think I ended up with more than I started off with. In the next day, I added a little tween effect to the health bar for the players and bosses. One issue that I've had the entire length of development has been that nothing is pixel perfect. So there are little seams in the tile maps, and the pixels aren't all the same size for some reason. So I tried out using the pixel perfect Unity camera, and to fix these issues. But for some reason, I can't smoothly zoom in anymore. So I'm going to disable it for now and come back later when I can find the way to zoom in and out smoothly. Then I went on another tangent and started working on a check screen for enemies, when you can learn how resistant they are to different damage types, and also their stats and stuff. In order to do this, I replaced the old damage type system, which just uses these floats which I multiply the damage value by, so I replaced it with enumerators that represent floats. 
So there's like neutral, which is times one, or resistant ones, which are times something less than one, or there's weak, which is times something more than one. And then I threw together a layout for the check screen and then never came back to it. I'll finish this soon, but it's not really required for the demo, so I moved on. On the next day, I made a bunch more environmental art, mostly these new rocks, which I then made breakable. And I kept working on pixel art the next day and made this tree, which I really liked. And then the next day, I put the tree in and made a bunch of new trees and also meshed with color palettes for the environment as a whole. And I think all the grass looks a lot better now. I still had a lot of stuff to do before I could release the demo, so I figured I could try to get it done before the end of the month. The day was July 11th, so I still had 20 days left. I listed out all my tasks I had left, which were mostly tweaks and bug fixing. But also, I need to finally make an animation and final sprite for my last party member, Ava. She's been a clone of Liam for way too long at this point. Day 145, I added some particles to the boss fight and then started adding plan state actions to enemies. Currently, the player is the only one who gets the chance to use skills during the plan state, and I figured that it would add some more strategy if enemies could use them as well, so I got to it. I repurposed a lot of code that I had for player actions during the plan state to allow enemies to perform all of the same actions, like healing, buffing, adding status effects, and running custom code. Currently, there's only one enemy action in the game, and the boss uses it, and all this action does is switch the state of the boss between the walking phase and the submerged phase. But later on, I'll probably add some enemy actions to do things like buff or prepare a more powerful attack. I also finally made some animations for a party member dying. Morbid. On the next day, I imported a new Unity asset, which I've been meaning to try out. It's called Feel, and it adds a bunch of effects that I can implement to improve the game's juice and feel. That's uh, where it gets its name. So I tried it out with dashing, for which I just added some chromatic aberration to, but it's a bit much for something that happens so often, so I moved the effect to the player getting hurt, which I think helps to recognize whenever you're getting hurt better, but doesn't really obscure the screen, like turning it red would. On the next day, I did some more work on environmental art, but I'm getting really tired of all this art, especially since I'm not too happy with how most of it is turning out, so I switched to instead implementing a way to use consumable items outside of battle. You just open up the inventory, click on a consumable, and then click on a player. It doesn't really work most of the time, but I'll iron out the bugs next. So the next day, I kept on working with consumables and stumbled into a huge bug that has somehow always existed with healing, and I just never noticed it. Whenever you heal any party member in the plan state, it actually just heals whatever your party leader is. So that means that all of the acts and items that heal don't actually correctly work. So I fixed it. It was really simple, and now you can use consumables inside and outside combat somewhat reliably. And the next day, I did a little bit of planning. Uh, no, seriously, that's all I wrote down. I had no idea what I was planning. And the next day, I also wrote down that I did some planning. But I also made some proper animations for concentrating to enter the plan state. And I just did this Hollow Knight healing sort of thing. And I don't love how it looks, but it communicates the action well, so it's good for now. Day 151, I finally got to adding details to the entire map using the new art I made, plus a bunch of bug fixing with concentration. Then I started work on an NPC who will help explain the mechanics of the game, which I worked on into the next day, where I actually wrote all the dialogue using a dialogue dialogue system I built a while ago. It works okay, but I need to streamline it to save time in the future. In the next day, I got to work on making dead party members actually die and also able to be revived. So I removed some bugs which let you switch to dead party members, and then I added reviving players to the things that plan state acts and items can do. And it also worked on bouncing many things in the game, like increasing enemy collision damage, decreasing the player's defense and invincibility time, and fixing some issues with knockback. And on day 154, I made a game over screen. It's very basic, but it should work. And I also used fuel to make some new effects for killing enemies, killing bosses, and taking damage. And it also finally properly implemented a death animation for the crab boss. And the next day I set up a google forum for feedback for the demo which has a link in the game. If you find any bugs that I missed or have any other feedback then please leave it here as it's very helpful for me. I fixed some bugs on the boss fight with breakable objects and with the lose screen. And then I added the second NPC which is definitely not a recolor of the first NPC who explains the mechanics of the boss fight. And on the next day I fixed about a billion bugs. But I also set up acts so that ones like the revive can only target dead party members, and other acts like healing can only target live ones. I also have it so some acts can target all of them. But the more I work on the plan state, the more bugs I seem to find. So I have two main goals now before I release the demo. Polish the plan state as much as possible and create the sprite for the final party member, Ava. I added a label for targets, first thing the next day, and then I improved the layout of the plan menu and got to removing bugs. But now I just have one task left, making Ava. I put this off for a while, mostly because I can't get a decent looking hairstyle with so few pixels, and also because I've been wanting to have 
her outfit be a white shirt with a hoodie tied around it. I think that it's a somewhat unique and memorable outfit design, but I'm having trouble getting the concept across to so few pixels. But after a lot of trial and error, I finalized the design for all of the directions. I think it's pretty good, although I'm not against changing the hair. But now, it's grind time. So I spent the rest of the day animating using Liam's movement as a base, and the next day as well. But by the end of day 159, I had it completed and implemented in the game. Neat. And the last two days were spent fixing more bugs that kept popping up. But finally, it was time. So I made the last few adjustments and then released the game onto itch.io for free. You can try out this early demo now. There isn't that much content, although the boss could take a few tries. I definitely missed my initial goal to get the beta and video out in July, but I eventually got it out. On day 162, I decided to start by once again changing how you enter the plan state. I removed the Hollow Knight style concentration and instead switches so the plan state always works like how it does during boss fights. And yeah, I think this works well, as it standardizes the links of turns. At this time, I was also considering revisiting an early design decision I made. I originally planned to make it so the plan X can never deal damage directly to enemies, but I'm beginning to think that that's stupid, as it's very limiting for what the plan moves can do. So I'll have to think about it. But then I spent a while bouncing some things. First off, I changed mana so you generate less of it over time, and there's also a higher max amount of it, and also most plan state acts now use less mana. This should make it so that you are less likely to have max mana all the time, but you can also use more acts per turn. I also bounced the players. Ava is way too powerful right now. So I nerfed her, buffed Liam and Yuri, and then just nerfed the player stats in general to make the game a little bit more difficult. I also fixed some small bugs, mostly small visual ones. Finally, I decided to make a new job for Liam. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the ninja job right now, and so I'm going to put it aside and make another simple job for Liam, the monk. The monk uses staffs and other blunt weapons, but I'm not planning on making his plan axe right now. The idea for these axes is for them to provide a variety of buffs to things like defense, knockback, and stun. And I'll also make some new combat skills for the monk, and the first one is the whirlwind attack. The whirlwind attack was pretty simple to implement. I just shot the player forward, dealt damage at a radius around the player, and made the player immune to melee damage but not bullets, which should keep the whirlwind from being used too carelessly or just as a way to escape bullets. And I continued to work on the whirlwind the next day, and I made an animation for it. But I realized I didn't have a system for adding skill-specific animations to the game, so it would be difficult to implement. I tried adding a second animation controller that just gets enabled for this, but it was buggy and I realized how bad of a workaround this was. So on the next day, I just decided to redo the animations, so they are just the dash animations for the player, plus a spinning staff thing. This actually looks pretty good and will work for any player sprites. I am considering making it so that not only can players use a skill or two for the sub job, but maybe also making it so that different jobs have different sprites and animations. So this will work with both future systems if I ever decide to implement them without me having to make hundreds of extra sprites. On day 165, I cut down on the job trees planned for each character. I want to simplify each of them as much as possible to reduce the amount of work making them all will be. Now there are planned to be 7 jobs for characters, which might still be too many. But I really like all the job ideas I have right now, so I'll only cut them down in the future if absolutely necessary. I also made it so the monk's spin attack automatically takes colors from your equipped weapons, so now it looks right with the ninja swords and the monk's staff. And now it's time to finish up the monk's combat skills with its utility skill, the Chi Blast. This is a pretty simple skill that is basically a short range blank from Enter the Gungeon. The Chi Blast destroys nearby enemy bullets and knocks down and damages and stuns nearby enemies. It's got a long cooldown, but it works well in tandem with the Whirlwind Attack as you can stun an enemy to make sure it doesn't shoot any bullets at it while you use the Whirlwind Attack on it. It was very simple to make and I also made some particles and effects for it. But the final thing I focused on for day 165 was status effects. I want to rework the system so I don't have to attach a bunch of extra custom effect objects for status effects, and I continued on the status effect to rework the next day, and it went pretty well. I was able to fix some bugs related to status effects as well, such as enemies targeting getting messed up by taking tick damage, and also fighter status effect UI not going away whenever there are no stacks left. On day 167, I started to make a check screen for displaying the stats, weaknesses, and other details for the currently targeted enemy or party member. And while I was setting this up, I also had to make icons for each damage type in the game. And I worked on this into the next day, whenever I got all of the references working and the text properly displaying. And I made it so that Ava has a unique axe so that can display this check screen for any instance. And yeah, that's it. It's not very pretty yet, but I have a functioning check screen. On day 169, I started on a big rework to how you generate focus. Instead of the kind of strange system with the cycles they have right now, I want to make a more straightforward combo system, where you get rewarded for doing a variety of things with increased combo level, and whenever your turn ends, you generate focus based on this combo. In a conjunction with this idea, I also had the idea for a new sort of plan state act, the follow-up. Basically, you can use an act for a party member in the plan state who is not your active party member, and then during the action state, you can press a button to trigger the follow-up attack. Each two party members have a unique combo with each other, similar to how a Mori similar system works. 
and they can do things like dealing damage to a targeted enemy or healing and buffing the active party member. And we each have a custom UI animation, and also the higher your combo meter is, the more damage the follow-up does. I also have an extra idea to create a little bit more long-term strategy for longer battles, like boss fights, by creating a focus economy. Similar to strategy or tower defense games, early on in a battle, you can spend focus through acts in order to increase the amount of focus and combo you generate later in the game, which pays itself back in time. It's a pretty simple short-term risk versus longer-term reward system that I think could add some depth to the game. But now I'm just going to make the combo bar, so I designed the UI. And on day 170, I continued planning out the follow-up system. And I made a table in Milanote to plan out each party member's interactions with the others. So on the next day, I started on the actual behavior for the combo meter. Doing things like killing enemies, hitting weaknesses, critical hits, and other similar actions will net you point events. What the display is little bits of text on the combo meter and increase the combo bar, similar to games like Ultra Kill. And I spent the rest of the days 171, 172, 173, and 174 working on this. It had a lot more bugs and issues than I initially anticipated, but after a ton of bug fixing, it was finally working, and I also decided to make some new effects for damage numbers by using the text animator package that I had from the Unity Asset Store. And on day 175, I continued working on the damage numbers. First off, making the animations less janky, and then also making it so I did not only have unique colors for the text, but also unique outline colors to help better set different events apart. I also fixed bugs with reviving, the player spawning in walls after the plan state, and I also stopped the boss fight from having an endless explosion loot. On day 176, I also fixed this stupid bug that happens to you after you die once and screws up the dash animation sprites. You might have noticed this because it's been around for like months. I don't know why it took me so long to figure it out, but I solved it by just adding a few more keyframes to the other animations. And I also kept fixing other bugs, like the crap boss's claw sometimes attacks and moves in the plan state, so I fixed that. On day 177, now that the game is in a more stable state, I decided to start on a major rehaul. I'm going to remake practically every piece of UI in the game. Now this new UI might not be final, but it will be a lot closer to fight, and I'm actually going to sketch out all this UI on paper, then design it in Photoshop, and then actually implement it, to make sure that it all looks good and flows together. So on day 178, I made a bunch of UI designs in Photoshop, and I also got a brand new open source package called Shapes, which just adds the ability for me to use vector shapes in the Unity Editor for UI. This is useful, as these shapes scale infinitely for different resolutions. I was hoping that I could animate their vertices with the Unity Animator for transitions, but that didn't work out, so I'll have to find some other way to do that. But on day 179, I started moving some of the new UI designs into Unity, starting with a new health bar and combo meter. On day 180, I made an equipment screen in Photoshop, and also made a screen for unlocking new jobs for characters. I also finally made a staff for the monk job, as he'd been using the katana up to now. And I also did some testing and tweaking for the boss fight to make it more fun. I realized at this point that the combo system was kind of broken for boss fights, as you either generate zero combo because you didn't get any kills, or you only attack the boss's weakness, which generated way too much combo. So I need to change how the system works in the future to make it more skill-based and less based on just attacking weaknesses. On day 181, I realized that I hadn't yet made a way to get to the new menus I was making, so I went ahead and designed a pause menu in Photoshop that would have all the buttons for the new menus I'm making. So then I got to programming the pause menu, laying it all out in Unity, programming the button behavior, setting up pausing and unpausing, and finally I set up an animation controller that I'll be using for all the transitions between all of the states. Now the one thing I've always seen online about animation controllers with UI is no, you are not supposed to use them, because they're bad for performance and messy or whatever. And being a responsible developer, I decided to completely ignore this, because I like making animations in the animator and not through code. But anyways, I'm about to really get started on this UI overhaul, so I hope nothing bad happens. It's Drover. This is it. Findboom.mp3. Unity just announced its new runtime fee system. I already made a video over this, but Unity basically decided that it will implement a new fee that basically applied to all games ever made in the engine. If they make enough money, they pay a fee per game unit installed. People were angry, and I even considered switching engines. It was not fun. But on day 183, I found something that I've been looking for for a long time. Months ago, I had seen this cool little game on Twitter that was kind of similar to mine, and it was ridiculously satisfying looking. And I thought it'd be cool to implement some of the effects they had in the game, but then I couldn't find the accounts again. But finally on day 183, it just so happened to pop up in my feed again. So I saved it and decided to implement some of its effects. The game doesn't seem to have a name yet, but it's by Alexandre Kadri on Twitter, who I'm linking in the description and you should check out because his game looks really cool. It's also got a cross 
job thing going on, and I really like how you can mix and match abilities between the two jobs that you have equipped, so I might just have to borrow that idea sometime in the future. But for now, it's juice time. I decided to start by making enemies squash and stretch whenever they are hit. I started out doing this through animation, but it really doesn't look that great, and also doesn't allow me to modify values for different enemies to make some of them more bouncy or some of them more solid. So I instead added code to the instance controller that allows me to control squash and stretch their animation curves in a coefficient. I think this way is more coefficient. That's not even a pun. I just said the same word twice. Why is this in the script? On day 184, I tweaked the squash and stretch and added a bunch more bounce to the damage numbers, and on day 185, I tried adding in a slash line effect similar to the one that is in Alexandre's game. But I couldn't get it to look right, so I, uh, um, uh, instead I, uh, yeah, that's all I did. That was a productive day. So, uh, before the crisis, I was working on UI, so let's get back to that. On day 186, I finished up the pause menu and added the item menu in, plus some transition animations between the two menus. After that, I started work on the equipment menu, which is just the menu that'll be used for changing the jobs, abilities, and equipment of party members. I kept working on the equipment menu the next day, and I was going to make it actually work, but then I realized something. I don't know how weapons should work in the game. Should all the weapons have unique stats? Should the weapon just control the bullet pattern, and maybe some other things like damage level, and instead damage should be based on a player's level? Should I even have levels? I honestly don't know, and fast forwards to the 200th day, I still don't know. So I need to set aside some time to really plan out how progression and equipment will function in the game. But in the meantime, I just worked on more transitions between the equipment menu and the pause menu. That pretty much wraps up the pause menu for now. I'll need to make the config menu and the map menu plus the equipment functionality later, but I'm going to focus on making the follow-up system I planned out a little while ago. So on day 188, I started by making some slight adjustments to the combo system. First off, now dealing damage also raises the combo level very slightly, instead of just pausing the bar from lowering for a few moments. So now it is possible to get a small combo multiplier by just consistently dealing damage, which is a good thing. I then started on the new follow-up system. I implemented a main controller script, a design pattern for the game objects and strips to make the individual follow-up behaviors, and a UI that tells you whenever you can use the attack. And on day 189, I just started on some new UI for the plan state by drawing it all out on paper. Yeah, this will probably take a while. On day 190, I just made the very first follow-up, Arrow Rain. This is a follow-up that triggers whenever you have Liam as your active party member, and Yuri performs a follow-up attack. Basically, it just spawns the area at the position where your mouse is, and that area does tick damage over time to enemies in the area. I made an Arrow Rain particle effect for it, got it instantiating and everything, and now it sort of works, but it's still kind of buggy. So after that, I decided to work on the new layout for the Axe selection screen, since this new screen is how you'll be triggering the follow-ups. The new Axe screen splits acts into four sections. The follow-up, core acts, which are ones that the character can always use no matter their job, their main jobs acts, and their secondary job acts. I actually am not implementing secondary jobs yet, because I still only have one job for Yuri and Ava made and the ninja barely works, but I put a category in there for it as well. And the next day, I put together an object pool for the act buttons, the way I can have as many acts as I want for each category instead of the four that I'm currently locked to. And I also worked on menu navigation for the act menu. Next day, I fixed some bugs, and on day 100, 93, I added a new menu to the plan state, the focus calculator. Basically, whenever you start the plan state, it'll tell you how much focus you gain based on your combat level. It's super simple to add, and it is the first step in establishing the rest of my new plan states. So I started on making the designs for all the new plan state menus. I'm so tired of menus, why did I choose to make an RPG again? So on the next day, I grinded. I managed to get all the main states laid out and transitions between all the main ones done. There are still some extra cases that I haven't accounted for, but now I can focus on getting the new menu to actually work. And the next day was bug fixing the transitions, and on day 196, I made some of the last few states I needed for the plan states, the slightly upgraded item menu, and the targeting menu. Next day, I added in all the transitions that were left to make between every state. These are mostly just random edge cases, but now that I'm done with that, it's time for the analysis menu. Analysis menu is new, and it's basically the analysis menu from Persona 5. You can see each enemy or party member's stats, and even look at them with a check menu. Although if you haven't used Ava's check skill on them or killed them yet, you won't be able to see all their weaknesses and resistances. And I got all that done, although I don't have any sort of saving system in yet, so the check menu doesn't really work as of yet. That's for the future. But yeah, the huge UI overhaul is done. There are just a few days left, so I want to go out with a bang and create something that I can put in the thumbnail. Something that is neat. So I'm going to make a few things. First off, a way cooler follow-up with UI and effects and stuff. 
and also some hand-drawn art for the plant states. I've only done hand-drawn digital art for a game once before, and it was near the end of the last 100 days project. It turned out okay, but it was also very simple. I have very little experience with digital drawing programs, and I'm still pretty much a beginner at art in general, so this will be a learning process for sure. On day 198, I started work on the new follow-up. This one is for whenever Yuri is the active party member and Liam is the one following up. Basically, it's a high damage, single target attack that also stuns the enemy a bit, so I set up the behavior for it and it was even simpler than the first one. But on the next day, I started to make the follow-up look cool. I'm reusing the UI that I made forever ago with the katana weapon technique, and so I got that working with the follow-up and also added a ton of effects like screen shake, particles, and some distortion using the asset feel. I think it looks pretty neat. But I also had a few ideas for systems that could add some more skills to gaining combo levels. And these ideas are the Gray System and the Parry System. The Gray System is basically lifted straight out of Deltarune, down to the name. In Deltarune, whenever you barely miss a projectile, you hear a sound and your mana increases. So I want to do something similar, and increase your combo by a little bit whenever you barely miss a bullet. And also dashing will make it so you can't graze bullets for a few seconds, so it should incentivize you to not only get close to bullets and play aggressively, but also to avoid dashing and instead weave through bullets as much as possible to get higher combos and generate more focus. So I went ahead and implemented the system and it was very simple to make. As for the parry system, I really like parries. Sekiro is one of my favorite games of all time, but I don't know how to implement them in a bullet hell game. In a game like Sekiro, you have to parry attacks that are fast and have difficult timing. In a bullet hell, parrying a bullet would be just standing there as it slowly moves towards you and then clicking at the right moment. It just isn't the same and doesn't incentivize dodging the bullets but rather just running into them, which is kind of dumb. So my proposed solution is making parrying only work with melee attacks like the crab's claw attack. There aren't that many in the game right now, so it's kind of a niche move, but I think it'd be cool. So is day 200. I had to wait a few days until I had a day I could completely set aside to make this art. So let's make it. It took many, many tries. I decided to draw it out on paper first, and then trace it, but tracing it digitally kind of just showed that the paper drawing wasn't all that great, so I started over from the start a couple of times. I'm not super confident in my art skills, especially whenever it comes to drawing people, but it's something I really want to do with this game, so I think I'm going to keep at it. And I think I ended up with something that is solid enough to go in the game for now. I'm going to keep working on my drawing fundamentals outside of game development, and hopefully I'll be able to make some really great art for the game someday. But until then, this will do okay. By the way, this is only half the art I had planned for the plan state for Liam, as I want to make him turn around whenever you open up the act menu. I've got a placeholder here to show what I'm trying to, trying to get, so I'll try and make that other post soon. But it's day 200, and I'm out of time. Time. So here we are, 7 months of time and 100 days later. My game is moving along. I admittedly still only worked on the game on average every other day, which is still largely up to school, which is college now. I still have a decent amount of free time for the game and YouTube, but neither are my top priority. Thank you so much for watching until the end. And if you want more long form game development content, then you can check out this nearly 4 hour long video I did compiling the 2 year development history of my first commercial game, Couch Combat. And if you don't want to watch that, that's fine, it's a long video. Also, be sure to check out my website, boy11.fun. And if you want to make your own website with a .fun domain name, then use my code boy11 to get a 90% off of .fun domain for one year by using the link www.get.fun. Okay, bye.